Gavin from Spitfire and today we're on our way up to see Dave at D&J Projects. We're going to do a shake off. We're going to compare our screen against Dave's screen that he's had for three years I think now. We're going to go up there. We're going to see what changes we've made in the last two or three years. See what difference they made compared to Dave's. It is pretty wet this morning so I'm not quite sure how we're going to get on. But um, we're going to go and have a look and see how we get on. J projects and we're going to talk about a new screen compared to Dave's screen that he's had a couple of years so Dave's had this screen a couple of years he screens topsoil with it and general waste that comes into his yard he's had it three years just talking to Dave he says he's probably done between four and five thousand tons in the last three years so we're just going to run through some of the changes that we've made between Dave's screen here, which is, like I say, is three years old, and the new one here that we've done. Um, some of these changes I'll explain uh, because of after COVID, we couldn't get hold of some of the components. Um, and some of the changes were because as a business, we're constantly looking at ways we can do things better and improve the product. So one of the first changes that we made from Dave's screen to the new screen is we've gone to these, this style mount, it's like a roster style mount here. Dave's got springs on his screen, which is how we did it in the early days, but we found with these, transport could be a bit of an issue because the box literally sits on the top. When it's in position, it's absolutely fine, but transport, that could jump about on there, and they were also a little bit noisy. You can't get away from the fact that springs are a little bit noisy. So we went to these here, and if you plug this into the mains, you can hold a conversation next to it. It's very, very quiet. So that's one of the main changes that we made between the two screens. The next change that we made on the conveyor itself we went for a roller bed design so the the whole bed of the conveyor is now on rollers where on dave's screen it was what we called a slider bed it was a, a sheet metal bed and the belt was a fabric back belt that slid across the top so we've changed it to rollers because we thought that was more robust because we could then go to a more heavy duty belt one of the other changes that we made to this screen was we went to an external motor and gearbox um, on Dave's screen, he's got an internal drive, uh, internal drum drive, motor and gearbox, and we found that after COVID, we were on a 10-week lead time when it came to getting hold of them, where we can get these as a manufacturer within a couple of weeks. So we were forced to make the change from them to this, as it was going to slow down production. Um, any other changes we've made on this? There isn't really. Um, just a few tweaks, tweaks and changes, but in essence, it's still the same. It's still the same size screen box. Um, the two are both used, they're the same meshes in both, both decks. Uh, the same vibrating motor is the same on both. And apart from that, that's about it really. So we're gonna, now going to do a shake off. We're going to see how this compares to the old machine. See if any of these changes that we've made are actually giving us an increase in, in performance. So let's see how we get on. <laughs> So the big shake off today didn't exactly go as planned. We got up to Dave at D&J first thing this morning and we looked at the material and it did look wet. We started screening it, we got the screens in place, we started screening it and it is just a sloppy mess. So we've literally been rained off. So we're going to go back in the next few days once the material has dried out. We'll put some pictures up so you can see what we were up against. but deck screens do not like really really wet material as you can see this is really wet material there's other screening processes that you can use if you are screening 
uh, wet material like that and deck screens is not one of them. So we're going to go up there in the next few days once it's dried up and have another go. So it'll be ding ding round two for the shake off. So we're back at D&J this morning. The sun isn't really shining but at least it's dry. It has rained a little bit this morning but it's dry now. So we're comparing our new screen to the screen that Dave's had for three years and we've noticed this morning that there is actually a few subtle changes between the two that we didn't actually realise. The main one being that the meshes are slightly different. So in this one here we've got a 35 mil square mesh woven wire mesh screen in here and what Dave's got in his is a 40 mil. So Dave's got a 40 mil mesh in here so this mesh is five mil bigger than the one that we've got in our screen. On the bottom mesh, Dave's got what we call a piano wire mesh in the bottom. So this under here is what we call a piano wire mesh. You can see that you've got straight runs with three wires, then straight runs with th then three wires. So it's a little bit more open. On our screen over here, we've got 15 mil woven wire, but they're squares. So the holes are much closer together. It's the same hole size but obviously Dave's got long long 15 mil holes and we've got square 15 mil holes in ours and the difference it makes to the product if you look at the product down here this material here is much finer there's no sticks in it no little stones or anything like that so this is a much better product coming through the square mesh but we did find that in these wet conditions our screen did block a bit because it was so wet and tacky it was blocking if you look at this here, from the piano wire you can see all the little sticks in it and all these little balls in here so obviously this is still a good product but if you wanted a really fine product obviously the square mesh is, is the screen that you need to use but like I say in these wet conditions we did find that the, the 15mm square mesh did, did block in the, in the top because it was wet and sticky we also found, because this the screen, the 15mm square mesh screen was blocking slightly, we found that there was a lot of some material coming over the mid-size. This material here is it's, it's pretty wet and it's got a lot of clay in it. So you'll find that instead of the material going through the mesh, it's actually sitting on top of the mesh and compacting and actually coming down and coming down here. If you actually look at Dave's pipe there, there's a lot less material and the material that was coming down hadn't got as many fines in it so it wasn't because it wasn't blocking his meshes because Dave's got the 40 mil mesh in the top you'll also notice that Dave's got less less clay material being carried over on the top mesh where if you then look over at ours there's more, more clay material coming down and what that was also doing, it was binding with the, the bigger oversize. So we've changed the meshes out of Dave's screen into this new screen. We've now got the piano wire bottom meshes in and we've also got the 40 mil top meshes in. And you'll see the difference in the product that we've made now. If you look down here, there's a lot less material getting carried over. The screen mesh itself in the bottom isn't blinding over on the top and blocking. So we've now got material coming flowing down here there's less clay in the oversize and we've also got more material coming out the far end obviously we've got material coming down here before 
and we've now got more material coming out the far end. So this material here is still pretty wet. You can ball it up. It's still pretty wet material, but it is screening it. The material coming through here is probably a bit, 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 bit bigger than it was before, um, but it's now similar to what obviously was coming out of Dave's screen originally. So we're back from D&J Projects now. Um, interesting morning doing the shake off. Um, we managed to find some drier material. It's still pretty wet, as you can see in the video, it is still pretty wet. But just to see what difference some of the changes that we've made has actually made to the performance of the screen. It was a bit too wet to try and do a production sort of output sort of test. But what we did find was with the same, the same meshes, we took the meshes out of Dave's screen and put them in our screen and the product coming off of it was, was pretty identical, which we're not really surprised at because it is still the same vibrating motor on both screens. But what we didn't know was changing from uh, coil springs, the, the actual, you know, the metal springs on Dave's screen to the new roster style mounts on, on our screen. That didn't know what difference that would make. One thing that was obvious was um, turf on a deck screen has always been notoriously a bit tricky. Um, it would normally just sit there and come down slowly in that, but on the new screen, um, we've noticed that it clears the deck quicker on turf than um, than it did on Dave's, which is a plus. Uh, I think that's down to the fact that we've we've changed the orientation of the mounting of the of the vibrating motor. But apart from that, it did the same product production-wise. From what we could tell, it was probably very similar, comparable. Um, so yeah, I think we've we've sort of improved the screen by making the changes, the roller bed, the um, external motor and gearbox and changing onto the roster style mounts has certainly made it quieter and easier to transport and has certainly not made it any worse in, 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 in regard of, of how it screens. It's, uh, it's actually improved it by the fact that you can actually move turf and, and sort of more green, green matter material down the screen deck. So I think that, that's, that's a plus. So I think all in all, it was a success this morning. And um, we've got some exciting stuff planned for, for Dave at D&J Projects in the future. So, uh, keep watching you'll see what that is.